Good afternoon again, Buick brethren. Um, this episode of content will focus on utilizing a divorce choke with a aftermarket intake. Um, like an Edelbrock B4B or the Performer, I know that they have the little pad for the uh, thermostatic spring. Um, I'm, I'm assuming TA Performance does as well, and then uh, maybe the Offenhauser. I'm not too familiar with that, but I think they all came with the little pad. And by that I mean right here on this uh, B4B is a little pad. Um, I will disconnect the choke rod from the thermostat to the, to the choke in an effort to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, this rod was made for me by a gentleman down in Florida named David Butts a couple of years ago. Um, it's proved very helpful as this uh, weather starts to turn cold here in New England and southeastern Massachusetts. So I'm going to put this aside just for a second. So the little pad I'm talking about, here's the cover. That just comes right off. Um, as you can see, I've had to modify it uh, a bit. Just because it took me a while to get this choke rod tweaked to where it needed to be. Um, but the pad is right under there. <clears throat> now this thermostatic choke spring, let me bring it a little bit of light in here. Here we go. This is from a small block Chevy, early seventies with the divorce choke. I believe they, uh, are available on your, uh, ground up restoration, uh, I know TA sells a similar one, which does the same thing, but what I had to do when I put this on a couple years ago was where this screw is right here. I actually had to drill down just a little bit. That's a self-tapping screw. There's an actually a little divot on the pad. Um, you can use as a guide. The stock intake has a well, so the whole idea of this divorce choke is you set the choke, the spring constricts, once the intake heats up, the spring relaxes, and then it opens the choke up to where it's at now. But as you can see, this is uh, aftermarket, and we don't have the well, so we have to improvise. Um, this doesn't get hot as quick as a cast iron intake would, um, but it does work. It just takes a little bit longer. My crossovers are not blocked off either, so there is plenty of heat going in there. But the colder the temperature, the longer it takes for the choke to open, but it does open. Um, this is what it looks like. So, like I said, it screws in there. There's a little tab on the bottom. Um, I actually had to grind that down um, when I installed the other one. Almost a flat. So, this is actually an NOS piece. I forget where I got it, but... Part number 3989058. Three nine eight nine zero five eight. So, run that number through eBay. I'm sure something will come up. So, the divorce choke. I am going to put the cover back on. Just snaps on. Like that. Now, the rod. This is, uh, I think it's one eighth welding rod. Um, and... You can see it's got a little groove there, right at the tip. So once you put it in through the, like this, 
And you're always going to use the whole standard like that. Okay, once you put that in, this little hairpin thing or whatever you call it, clips it on the other side to hold it. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it off for now anyway. I don't need it in order to start the car. So, divorce choke on a quadra jet. There. That's the fast idle cam right there. See a little bit better. There we go. Right now it's on the lowest step. When you set the choke, that goes all the way up. And the choke plate here should essentially snap shut. Okay. Um, that would be when you were giving it your one pump of gas to uh, from the accelerator pump to squirt in the intake. Okay. That's how these were designed. One pump. This thing snaps closed completely. Car would fire. And the choke pull off here opens this up to about an eighth of an inch so that it doesn't stall and allows it to stay at high idle. This choke, uh, this fast idle cam will stay up there until you tap the throttle. Then it goes to step number two. And that's when most of your uh, warm up, high idle warm up will come in. And then eventually, and by design, once the spring is relaxed, this will come down to this step down here on the bottom. Okay? By design, gravity takes over and that will always go down. One way that that wouldn't go down is if this choke rod was too long and it will hold it up. Okay, right now the choke is that the spring is expanded because it's cold so that is working against that choke rod but once it's warmed up that will be down like that it's that's how it's done it's done by design all right there is an adjustment whoops on the high idle side there's a screw. I don't know if you can see it. Most likely not. Damn this light. Oh, there it is. That screw right there. Right in the middle of the screen. To the right of the pull-off. Flathead screw. That is how you adjust the high idle. Okay, that screw and that adjustment has nothing to do with your base idle or your curb idle or just whatever you whatever you want to call it. Regular idle. Once the choke is uh, fully open and the car is warmed up, that screw I just showed you. Only has an effect on the high idle situation over here. All right. So I haven't started this in probably a week ish. And it's been relatively cold here um, at night, anyway, probably the last five or six days. So I'll show you. <sighs> how this is supposed to work so you I, picture me in the car okay all the way to the floor choke blade is completely shut like that one pump 
Give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to try and set this phone up so that you can watch the choke blade open and the vacuum pull off of the vacuum brake. This white thing right here. For those of you who don't know what it is, work. Oh, everything works simultaneously. So just give me one second. All right, wish me luck. In theory, this should fire up. It may take a couple cranks. Like I said, it hasn't been started, but it should work. Now you see it's on the second step.
And that's that. So you got an idea what I'm talking about. You noticed, like I said earlier, the intake wasn't warmed up yet. So even when I kicked it down to low idle, if I stab that throttle bracket again, it's going to go back up to the second step. And eventually, like I said, that comes down and your fast idle cam is on its lowest step. Okie doke.